How you doing? So I'm sitting in the shop here. I'm working on the uh, Home Light 410, running over the numbers. And I'm starting to try to come up with a plan on how I'm going to do this build. Because, you know, there's a lot to think about. So I'm going to show you where we're at or what these numbers are right now. And I'm going to kind of explain to you what I'm thinking here. Um, I'll, I'll, try to give, I'll try to give you a little bit more detail and hopefully I can explain it correctly. Because sometimes you get your words mixed up and, you know, it, it, I have difficulty putting it into words sometimes. So I'll do my best. But, you know, um, this is how I think of it. This is the, these are the, basically my thought process. This is the stuff I don't usually put on video. Uh, you almost never see me mention some of this stuff. So, you know, this is probably going to be one of the only times you ever get to hear me speak of this. So I hope you enjoy this. Alrighty. All right, so uh, here's the number. Um, after the machine work, the exhaust is opening at 116 degrees with 12 degrees of blowdown. There's no intake timing. Remember, this, this feeds with reeds through the crankcase, so there's no intake timing to think about here. Um, so it's 116 on the exhaust roof and 12 degrees of blowdown after machining. Uh, I'm going to be making some changes to that, and I'm actually sitting here trying to debate on what exactly I'm going to do. So, you know, um, the exhaust port could be widened up. Uh, actually, if you run the numbers, it could be widened up almost to those to those screw holes, and I'm not going to go that far. I'm probably not going to go, I don't know. I don't know exactly how wide I'm going to go, but I know I'm not going to go that wide. But I am going to widen it up, and I'm going to raise it. Uh, transfers. I don't think I'm going to raise the uppers. The reason is because I increased uh, crankcase volume by using this reed. Uh, it sits back further than the original, so... That extra distance and volume is going to increase the volume of the crankcase. And by doing that, I would lose crankcase pressure. Um, so in order to make up for that loss in pressure, I want the transfers to open later to, you know, to help compensate for that loss in pressure. But I also need to increase velocity through the transfers. So, you know, an increase of pressure will help increase velocity um there's other things you can do but there's a lot to consider here see if i uh if i raise the uppers or say i don't raise the uppers uh, i might run into an issue where i don't have enough transfer duration and the salt starts um starving for fuel um you know there's a lot here to consider but I think I'm not going to touch the uppers, at least at first. Um, I'm going to try to see what she does without raising the uppers. Um, I'm actually, I don't even know if I'm going to do a whole lot to the transfers. I kind of want to see where these transfers fall or how much they can feed the saw without doing anything to them. So most of the work I'm going to do here is at the exhaust, I think. Um, I, I need to find out what the limitations of these transfers are first. Um, they are an open transfer, so some things are easier to do here. Uh, it's like, for example, uh, I mean, it's kind of common. People talk about it a lot, how it's better to widen the exhaust before you raise it. Um, if you widen it, you will increase RPM but your power band will be broader um, and you, you'll have a little more torque. Well, you kind of get a similar effect by raising the transfers. Uh, you know, you go higher, you kind of lose some of that broad power band and stuff, and you're actually better off to go wider before you go higher. But it's also hard to make those decisions before you... Um, 
before you know what the limitations are, you know? And you don't know what the limitations of the transfers are until you get the exhaust set to a certain point and run it. Uh, and then you got to see if the transfers can feed it at those RPM. Um, for example, as RPM increases, or should I say as horsepower increases, you need a larger volume of fuel in order to create that horsepower. You know what I mean? Um, so how do you get a larger volume of fuel through, you know? Uh, some people will increase the duration of the transfer, which is coming by raising it. Uh, but it is typically better to go wider first. The problem with going wider is, like with, uh, with a, a closed transfer system, um, you, could temp you could technically make like an hourglass-shaped transfer, which will hinder performance. You don't want an hourglass shape. You want it to be more of like a like a pyramid shape. You know what I mean? You want it to be a little skinnier at the top than it is at the bottom. Uh, you don't want that hourglass because it, it can really hinder your flow characteristics. So, you know, doing that kind of a design is easier with an open transfer. Now, if you're worried about the power losses of an open transfer... Um, you see, back in the 70s, there were dyno runs done on closed for port versus uh, open port. And those dyno results showed that you can achieve the same peak horsepower on either design. The, the, clo or, yeah, the closed transfer ports, though, had a broader power band. And that's why you see the... Uh, the closed port transfers kind of gain their proper their, their popularity is because they give them a more useful RPM range, a broader power band. But you know these reed saws they already have a broader power band, so you know I'm thinking about doing some stuff here. Like one of the reasons I don't think I'm gonna go as wide on the transfer is because you see this little look here i'm thinking about taking it off but that will affect the direction of flow of that transfer so maybe i could come in here and remove some of this and that should actually help enhance the flow in the direction we want it right now the shape of it it is directed more towards the center and this one is directed more towards the back. Now I could take this one a little further over and bring it down to here. That would change the direction of this flow a little more towards the rear. And it would go wider. But say I do open it up that way down here, but I leave it the same at the top, and then I would end up with a pyramid shape. But I got to be careful with the flow because I don't want fuel to come in and kind of end up in a swooping kind of mess in here because then that'll hinder flow so you know, there's a lot to consider on transfers the shapes in transfers are more important than anything you can actually find a lot of power with your shapes it's because of the scavenging trying to get that flow to go to, or uh, the scavenging, yeah. It's because of the scavenging. It's it's trying to get that exhaust gases out that exhaust while the new charge is coming in. And the more efficiently you can do that, the more power you will find. Um, another thing you don't want to forget about here is, like, say we're, we're increasing the RPM of this saw. Um, and the more RPM you create the shorter amount of time the transfer is physically open. Now, I'm not talking degrees like on your degree wheel because um, that, that, that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I'm talking, like imagine this is a clock and we're talking seconds. So as RPM increases, the amount of time they are open and capable to flow is less. So 
you know, that's where you want to change some things to help get more flow. You go wider, you can increase your duration by going higher, um, you know. And another thing you can consider is increasing your crankcase compression. Um, you know, the pressure in the crankcase. Because the higher you run that pressure, the faster it will flow. It'll help increase velocity. And whenever you really want to try to get some RPMs, you really not need to think about that because um, it takes a lot of velocity to move that fuel in the amount of time that that's open. And as horsepower increases, you need to increase the amount of fuel, but it's not like a steady, de steady increase. Um, so as horsepower goes up, the, the increase on the amount of fuel you need goes up steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. So, you know, there is a lot to think about here in this port work. A lot. And after you build a few of them, a few of the same saws, it's not hard to kind of figure out the sweet spot, you know. But this is the first one. This is the first one of these I built, and I'm trying to get it as close as I can the first time out, you know. So I got a lot to think about here to decide on and, you know, to get ready for this port work. Uh, another thing you need to consider here, I forgot about, you need to think about your squish. Um, think about the speed that which the charge will flow across the squish band. This is called your squish velocity. So it's it's basically the, the speed in which your charge is going to move across the squish band to get into the center. Now the wider your squish band, this is going to help keep the engine cool. But if you run a wide squish band that's really tight, um, as your piston comes up, the fuel has to travel a further distance to get into the center. And if your velocity of your squish, your squish velocity is off, meaning the, the velocity or the, the, uh, the distance this has to travel versus how fast your piston's coming up and the speed of it and everything, if you don't get that right, you're going to create like hydraulic pressure basically slowing you down because you wouldn't have gotten rid of all the fuel in here that you needed to. You wouldn't have got it all missed, moved to the center, and it'll create a uh, negative effect by, you know, slowing you down. It'll it'll act like hydraulic pressure and slow your piston down as it's coming to the top. So, having said that, sometimes the best bet, especially on a really high RPM build, is to go with a smaller squish band. But you run into an issue where your combustion chamber could end up being too large and you don't have enough compression. And that's why you do a custom head build. That's so you can reduce the volume of your combustion chamber and have a smaller squish band to help with your high RPMs. So this is probably the only time I've ever spoke about this stuff. Um, a lot of people disagree with me and my thoughts, so I don't really talk about it much. I just kind of keep that stuff to myself, but I figured I'd put it in this video for you and uh, you know, give you something to think about. This is how I view it. Uh, you know, I've read a lot of literature and so forth, and this is how I view the, uh, the way things flow in there. Um, there's a lot to consider. You know, there's even more than what I just said. And if you think about all of that information, you can imagine how much more power you can find in there, you know? So, yeah, um, I, I, I don't know. I just, I rarely speak of this stuff, and that's kind of how my brain works. Is it right? I don't know. Is it wrong? I don't know. Um, a lot of this comes from literature or whatever, you know, books that I've read. And that's how I gathered my information. But that being said, you know, it's sometimes it's the way you interpret the book, you know, that you're reading. And, you know, it's possible that I got things jumbled up. But, you know, that's kind of how I, how I uh, gather my information, you know. 
and how I learn. So I hope you enjoyed this little video, this little horrible explanation, but I'm going to really think about this port work and I'm going to start chiseling at it a little bit at a time. Um, I'm going to move at it kind of slow and just do a little bit at a time until I kind of make up my mind how I want to do things and how I want to shape it and everything. I'm not just going to go in there and start hogging at it. Uh, I'm going to go in there and do a little bit of work, look at it, think about it a lot, you know, because I'm trying to, to hit this one the first time out, which I'm probably not. Um, it's rare that you do, so, you know, but it's it's kind of a challenge for me, I guess you could say. I'm kind of, I get, well, let me say that this way, like, like, like I'm challenging myself to be able to hit this saw that I've never built the first time out. You know what I mean? I'm creating a challenge for myself. But I hope you enjoyed this little video, a little explanation of what's going through my head on this. And we'll see you on the next one. Later.